Hey everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company and we're here in the Eastwood Garage doing another live tech session on both Facebook, uh, YouTube, and also on Eastwood.com. Uh, for any of you guys that haven't watched one of these before, we try and make them as interactive as possible. So I want you to log on, join our chat, and ask any questions you may have about Eastwood products or the topic that we're covering today. Uh, we have Scott sitting over here, that's our, one of our lead techs. Yeah, I'll be able to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, just make sure you hit them up on uh, Facebook or YouTube. I'll answer them right there. I can always shoot it over to Matt, too, to have him answer it live for you. Cool. Thanks, Scott. So uh, today, uh, what we're going to cover, I'm going to do a little uh, spot weld demo today. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can do spot welds and some tools that we offer that makes your life a little bit easier when you're doing spot welds or rosette welds uh, on sheet metal which is something you commonly uh, do when you're doing repairs on a vehicle. So the machine I'm going to be using today um, is the Eastwood MP200i. Uh, this machine is probably one of our most um, versatile machines because you can stick weld, uh, you can TIG weld, and you can also, of course, MIG weld with it. Um, and I'm going to use this one today to show you guys what we got cooking up. So I'm going to turn that on. We're going to try and get it into welding as quick as possible. So the first thing for anybody that's doing uh, spot welds or rosette welds, any welder that has a, a Tweco style nozzle like this machine here does, and the way you can quickly tell with a Tweco nozzle is if it unthreads like so, and you have the threads there, and it's threads on the inside of the nozzle. That's a Tweco style nozzle. So what we've designed, and this is something we've had for a little while, uh, even before this, this particular welder came out, uh, we have this cool little nozzle here that's an Eastwood design. And it has these little standoffs on the end here. What they allow you to do is you can replace your nozzle and thread this on. And I like to throw these just on the bottom of my car because you never know when you're going to need one. Uh, but you throw it on there like that. And then what you can do is it gives you a perfect standoff. And I'm going to cut this wire down a little bit just ahead of time. So you thread this on. What this is going to do is going to give us kind of a perfect standoff that you can use here. And I'll try and turn it, see if Joe can get a, a close-up here so you guys can see. So stand up there gets you the perfect height off of the panel so that when you're welding, you don't have to worry about your hands. If you're a little unsteady with your hands or maybe uh, your welding helmet uh, doesn't have a real good um, range, on it and it's a little hard to see or you're just your lighting in your shop's poor. With this you can get the, you know, if you have these two touching here and you have the wire cut, that it's going to be set just right to do a weld. So we're going to leave that on there first and show you that. Now the other way that you, that you can do this, there's two ways you can do it depending on the, on the uh, power of your welder. Uh, you can either stack your pieces together like this and if you have a welder that is powerful enough, you can actually weld right through the top layer into the bottom layer without drilling a hole. Now, the one thing you may find about that is uh, it may leave a little bit of additional material on top, depending how, how good you are at getting your machine set up. You may have a little additional material that you need to sand off. But if, you have a, if you're able to turn your welder up nice and high, um, and I actually run my wire speed just a little bit low, lower than normal, I can, you can zap that together. And we'll show you one of those dialing the machine in. The other most common way is you can drill or punch a hole in the top layer first. So we have this, this particular one is the Eastwood uh, pneumatic flange and punch tool. So it has a flange side over here. So you can flange a panel if you're overlapping and, and, and repairing a panel that way. But the side I really like the most is the, uh, the punch side. If you've ever drilled a lot of holes for uh, spot welding a panel together, uh, you'll probably never do it again after you use one of these. So the first thing is, it's really quick. So we'll put this in here. Now the cool thing 
is if your paddle's cut flat or straight rather, you can get the same distance every time you drop it in. So I'm going to put it here. And it just uh, punched a hole that quick. So again, if, you're, if your uh, piece is square and you hold it square, you can do your, uh, your top holes here very quickly. And you can see they're right there about at the same depth. And uh, if you want to get them perfectly dead on, you can actually draw a line uh, right on it. But as long as you, the only time they come off a little bit is if you don't have it pushed all the way down in or if you actually angle it a little bit, then you will get them a little off from the next one. But you can get them really, clo really close really quickly, which is nice. So I'm going to do a handful in here. I'm going to show you guys setting up the, the machine. So you can see how quick you can punch a panel. We probably would have been through maybe one, two holes if we were drilling it. The other thing that's really cool is it doesn't leave any type of, type of burrs on the back side here. So it's nice and smooth. It just punches a hole, kind of like a paper hole puncher would do. It takes that little circle out and we're good to go. We don't really have to do anything to clean that up. Like hit it with a grinder or a file like you would if you were drilling a hole uh, traditionally. So I'm going to show you guys using this, uh, the standoff here. And the other tool that comes with the kit, if you guys are looking at the, the MIG spot kit, so we have these pliers here that you can use. Uh, I'm trying to get Joe to get a close up here. So what these have is they have a nice cutout here in both of the jaws and these locking pliers. And they allow you to fit your MIG spot nozzle right in like that. So you can rest it in there and that gives you another area that you can be more stable when you're welding, which is really great. So you can be a lot more stable. You know you're locked in and you just basically hit the trigger and, and zap it together. So the other thing that's, uh, you know, it's nice that they fit them in there. The other key thing when you're doing spot welds is you want to make sure that the two pieces are tightly pressed together. If you do not press these together, you're going to have issues with it blowing out. Uh, you're also going to have issues with possibly it not being, them not being welded together as securely as they should. So by using these, I'm going to make them get a little tighter here. Clamp it together. And before you weld, you just want to check. Make sure that you're going to get your nozzle right over that weld. So I'm actually going to, you can move it around if you'd like. But if you set your pliers just right, you can, you can drop the nozzle in like this. And once it bottoms out, against it you know that you're set. So I'm going to go just a little bit tighter here and if you're a little more confident you can uh, you can just you don't have to dial it in that close you can just move it to the front and you're fine. Um, but so now we got it dialed in there right over top. Try and turn it so you guys can see there. All right so I'm going to move our ground clamp just a little closer to where we're welding here. From the side. Put my helmet on. And put our gloves on. And I'll see if we can dial the machine and get our spot welds just like we want them to look. So I haven't even looked at the machine here. We're just going to hit a trigger and then show you guys how to diagnose this and get it set up. So there's our first one.
And you can see it's pretty, pretty flat there. On the other side, and you can see it probably, we can either turn the temperature down just a little bit, the heat on our machine, or I could let off the trigger a little sooner. Uh, either one is just fine because uh, we're, we're, we're burning through a little bit there, but we did not blow a hole or anything like that. This is still tightly together. And this is the area where these pliers come really in hand, become really handy. You can see that there's this gap here. This is what happens a lot of times when you're, when you're welding a, a two pieces together like this. They're going to be more spread out here. And even if you clamped it there, you, there, you can't just assume that this is all okay. You're going to have to clamp each one just to slowly pull it together. So if you have a gap like any of these in your panel, you're going to have an area where the panel's not flat. Uh, you might not get the, the uh, weld that you want in there, and it may not have a good grab on that panel there, and you may have an issue with it. So make sure that these are clamped. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn, turn our power down just a little bit. And on the machine here, the MP200i, it's, it's nice. You can really dial it in since it's got the, uh, it's got the digital readout for the voltage. So I'm going to drop down to 18 and a half here and then dial the machine in and see where we're at. That was a little better there. You can see on the back side, on this one, we don't have as nearly as much weld there showing through. We don't want you know a blob on the bottom like that one was. That one's just barely through there. And on the top side, nice and flat. And that would require very little grinding to sand that weld down. So if you want to take it even a step further, the, uh, the MP200i also has a function here where we can set up a spot timer. So all you do to turn the spot timer on is we click the spot timer switch to on. And then there's a little timer here that's going to show up on, on the opposite screen there. And we can adjust that to where we want it to be. So I'm going to go there and I'll show you guys. Well, actually, let's turn it up first and we'll go down. So we got a four seconds, same amperage. I'm going to put our little pliers here back on for our standoff. If you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them to Scott and I'll answer any I can uh, that he may have for me after we do a weld. So let's check and see what we got here. I'm just going to hold the trigger down and it'll stop automatically. Now you can hear way too long there. So you got to turn it up that far way too far. It's just going to burn away same amperage, or I mean same voltage on the machine, so same power, it's just that the trigger, you know, with the spot timer, held it on much, much longer and just burned it away. So that's far too long. There's really not much reason to have it that far up unless you're doing an actual plug weld where you're filling a, a hole. You may do that. Let's turn it down to half a second here and try not to make as much mess. So again, I'm going to clamp it together. Do you have any questions coming up for you, Scott? Here, while you're doing it, one of the ones is uh, Andrew has asked if you can do this also with flux core wire. Mic's not on? True. My mic's not on. Sorry about that. So Andrew has asked if you can also spot weld the way you're doing with flux core wire. Yeah, so that's a good question. You can do the same process um, spot welding like this with flux core wire. You don't necessarily need gas. The only thing to keep in mind is that it does... Uh, add some additional spatter just from the process of flux core that happens. Um, and it's a little more difficult to weld thinner metals like this, 
but if you're able to dial your machine in just right, you can do it. It just takes a little more finesse um, with setting everything up because of the thicker size of the wire. It takes more heat to burn off your flux core wire. Um, and sometimes that wire is thicker than like 20 gauge steel. So you're running into a little problem there. But if you, uh, if you practice a little bit on an extra piece of material, you can set it up, you can do it, uh, and it works just fine. If you want to combat the, um, the um, slag that ends up sticking around a flux core weld or the, you know, the pebbles that come off around it, the debris, what you could do is we sell an anti-spatter spray that you could spray on your panel and it, none of that will stick to it. So it'll require less cleanup when you're done welding. It's really handy for flux core welding. I, I definitely suggest using that. Um, but yes, you can do the same process. Just got to take a little more care to dial the machine in. So we got to turn down now about half a second. Same, so I didn't touch anything on the voltage here on the machine. Let's put, let's put our ground on it. So we're not having that issue. There we go. Cut this extra off here. Much shorter. See how quick I can get in there and set the spot weld up because I got these the uh, the nozzle on there and the pliers. I didn't even really have to second guess myself. I just pushed it in and hit the trigger, and the half second on there was was pretty darn good. You can see this weld. You know, ignore that one that I showed you the extreme. But you see the diameter of these two welds. This one with the half second, same same heat but a half second set on the spot timer. We got a much smaller uh, heat effective zone, smaller weld area. We're still getting the same, we're still getting the, the, the similar penetration, but this one isn't coming through quite as much, which is good. So that's a pretty good one right there. Um, doesn't require much for, for grinding or sanding, and you're good to go. So if you're having problems with uh, burning through or having holes, another thing you can do, <coughs> excuse me, is you can use our copper backed pliers, locking pliers that are similar to the other ones there. We have these available separately on the website. And what you can do with those is you can put them on the back side so you can fill a hole or if you're afraid of burning through or you're having a little bit of trouble with burning through, well, this isn't going to solve miracles here. This isn't going to make your caterpillar, caterpillar mess magically go away. But so, same same thing here. We can lock our lock our torch in. I'm going to adjust it a little more centered here. Like that. Now on the back side, it's got the copper backer. So with the copper backer, it's not going to burn through. It's just going to kind of disperse that extra material. Again, within reason. This isn't going to work miracles here if you're, if you're really crazy off on your settings. So same thing. I'll hook this one here. Lock it in. Same half second. My ground must be... We're here, geez. And I forgot to do my tip I always teach you guys to cut the little ball off the end. That's why. <laughs> I forget it too. So same weld. Now notice the back side here. Here's where the difference is. So I didn't change anything on the settings of the machine. Now look at the back side here. We have no burn through here. It's nice and flat. There's no issues. That's a cool little tip. You can use these pliers as well. If it's an area where you don't want to have to grind or maybe it's an area that you can't get to to sand this. So a good example is if you're doing, say, um, a trunk lid of a car where it has a recessed area or channel when you're welding. Um, that area needs to fit down inside of the, of the trunk opening and 
you can't get a grinder in there to necessarily back, grind the back of your welds and they may hit when you're closing the trunk. So if you use these to fit them in there, uh, you can get a nice flat weld on both the front and the back side and you don't have any cleanup whatsoever. So that's a cool little trick. I have a set of these that I keep for just that reason. So, last thing we're going to show you is I'm going to crank the welder up a little bit. I'm going to show you guys how to dial in without drilling holes. So we're going to use the same pliers. I'm going to use these, this set again here. And the other, other thing is this is going to, now when we don't have a hole drilled, this is going to give us a bullseye here where we want to weld. So you, mar you can actually put the pliers right where you want to weld there. We're going to cut our little extra off this time. So I have that issue. And now we're going to crank this up quite a bit because I still want a small, a fairly small weld. And we have a spot timer on here and we're going to show you guys how to dial this in. So, I think without even looking at it, just from the sound, I think we're probably going to need a little more time on that spot welder. That's not too bad. So you can see we got the penetration on the back side there. Now on the front side, and this is what I was talking about earlier. The drilling the hell definitely helps. We have a little bit of a of a proud weld there sitting a little high. That's probably would take a little bit of grinding there. I would sand that off, sand it a little more flat. But we can test our. See, we need a little more time on that. So we got a little bit of penetration there, but it wasn't enough to actually burn through there. So we need to crank that up give a little more time on the spot timer to get the adhesion that we need. So you got to listen to it and know you can hear how it's coming through there, but that was not enough. So we're going to turn, we're going to turn this up just a little more here. We're going to turn our time up considerably here. Uh, now when you get into this edge work, this is where you may have a problem. If this is more in the center of the panel, you may not have an issue, uh, but we gotta, we're going to be fighting burning away on the, uh, on the edge. We're going to eat the edge away, so we don't want to do that. So I have this turned up now. Um, it might even be a little high. But I jumped quite a bit on the time, so let's see here. So, you see, much larger weld. We got a got an area that's that's raised up even larger now. Our heat affected zone is going to even be even larger. So if you're in a panel that may have, war you, you don't want to warp, that could become an issue. On the back side, you can see an even larger area where it's filling up. So the more of that is, I like to use the, the, the punch, the top side panel, because you're going to get, you're going to be sure that you're getting the adhesion that you want. And you also can get those welds nice and flat and um, require little to no sanding at all right out of the box. You don't have to do anything. So it takes a little extra time, but I think it's, uh, it's definitely worth it because this, is, this one here would take a, a quite a bit of sanding, and if you got 25 of them to do, that gets old really fast. So any other questions we have? That's Sure, so uh, one of the things that I, I can touch on just as not really a question, but just to refer to, so on the spot weld feature, uh, when you whatever you set it to, when you pull the trigger, it counts down. When it hits that that time, no matter how long you hold that 
trigger, yes. it will no longer create the weld anymore. Because that was one of the kind of questions, you know, how it works in that sense. Yeah, so you can sit there and hold it, it won't do anything. It'll just stop. So then you can release, move on, and do it again. Yes. Yeah, um, that, that's a good point that I did kind of graze over that for you. Um, if any of you guys that haven't seen this machine before, we have a couple of really good videos where we went over specifically just that spot weld function. So if you uh, are on our YouTube channel, you can uh, just type in uh, spot weld Eastwood um, or Eastwood MP200i. And we have a nice little live that I did, I don't know, a month or so ago. Where we went over just that function and we showed you really dialing those in. But I just wanted to show you guys a couple tips today for, uh, for spot welding. But that's good, Scott, keeping me honest here. I, I do graze over things from time to time. Yeah. To time. And then also real quick, sure. uh, Kyle asks if you can show the flange side of the nozzle. So showing how it's got those nice little standoffs, if Joe can get a zoom oh, in Oh, okay, on. he wants another shot of that? Yeah, yeah. let me um, take this piece here. And, oh, wait, we'll show you just the, let's get rid of this mess here from that. Do you want it on a piece of metal, Joe? Let me keep hitting the trigger here. All right. Good, bad. There we go. So those are the little standoffs here it's for Kyle that's asking for that. If you missed it in the beginning, uh, you see those little standoffs. And they just give you a little bit of extra so that you have a little wire sticking out um, but not touching the end there. That's one key thing. You want to make sure that you do cut your wire flush uh, because you don't want the wire touching before the standoffs touch, because then it's kind of losing the whole idea of keeping at the right height. But it's pretty simple, and when we're ready to switch back here, what I do every time, I take it, throw it on the bottom of my cart so I don't lose it, thread it back on, and we're ready to go, that quick and simple. So it's always good to keep at least one or a couple of them sitting on the bottom uh, shelf or the top shelf of your cart. And that way you can have it when you're ready to use it. You can just swap them back and forth. I like conversions like that that are very quick. If it's going to take me five, ten minutes to swap something over, I'm not going to want to do it. So, um, Any other questions we have? Nope, that's it. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. As always, if you have any ideas for future broadcasts um, on a particular project or an Eastwood tool or a product that you would like to see in use, Drop us a comment on YouTube or Facebook, and we will do our best to uh, put one of them together. Uh, tomorrow, we are doing a live again at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to show you guys some uh, tips and tricks on using a planishing hammer. So we have an Eastwood planishing hammer. I'm going to show you guys why you need a planishing hammer if you're doing metal fab sheet metal work, metal fabrication, or metal shaping, why a planishing hammer is very helpful to, to, uh, to have. So thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch you guys tomorrow.